Hi, I'm Trisha J. Wildrich, and I am a novel friend. A novel friend is the business that I started some time ago to encompass my editing, my writing, being an author, and everything I love about words, because words are a bridge between people for communications, a way to build relationships, and as corny as it sounds, to make the world a better place. Hello YouTube! Happy Halloween from Trish at A Novel Friend, writing and editing. I am sharing my poetry every week with you and also prose and maybe some editorial rants. And October is my favorite month. I'm sure you can't tell in the least. So I am having extra fun with my October readings. Today's reading is called Witch. I know, you're shocked. And it is in the New England Horror Writers Anthology, appropriately named Wicked Witches. And I really like this poem. I wanted to share it with you because it deals with issues that are still around today, even though it's set in like colonial Massachusetts. Speaking Massachusetts, 80 degrees, all black, I love you. Um, the poem also was in the 2016 Year's Honorable Mention for Year's Best of Horror by Ellen Datlow. And with the political scene as it is, a lot of it still holds true where women are not believed or, you know, hunted down and told to behave and that we're evil by just existing. So that's what I'll be sharing with you today um, and also next week. So it's a long poem because that's what I do. Most of my poems that are published are story poems. So part one is what I'm sharing with you today. And if you want a copy, you can get it in the New England Horror Writers Wicked Witches Anthology, which here's what it looks like. And there's a link down below. Witch. They called her a witch. One time, she nearly wandered into the woods, the forbidden, dark, bedeviled woods. She said she was following a squirrel. She liked its little furry face and the look and its big shiny eyes. And the squirrel liked the burnt crusts of bread she'd thrown. She was not a very good cook. Things often burned in her presence or tasted off. But the squirrel had appreciated the kindness and shouldn't one always do kindness to all of God's creatures? They called her a witch. Never in her presence, and certainly not in her father's, he flew to sinful rage when anyone suggested his wife's passing in childbirth was due to anything devilish. He loved his daughter well, though she could not cook, though she did not speak until almost four years of age, though she often forgot what she was doing, resulting in burned food or poorly sewn clothes, or sheep that got sick from getting chicken grain instead of their own feed. She hadn't meant any harm, and she cried when two ewes died. Too much, far too many tears, for a human to shed over dumb beasts if you asked certain people. They called her a witch. Goodman Baker had noticed the girl, hardly still a girl. She would trade her family's goat's milk and her father's leatherwork skills for his baked bread when hers burnt, a frequent enough occurrence. She trusted Goodman Baker as she trusted everyone, and he taught her that it was important for good girls to never speak ill of others and to keep secrets no matter what. And if she were not a good girl, she would have to be a witch. And witches belonged to the devil. So she kept secret the things that happened behind Goodman Baker's house when Goodwife Baker was not home. Even when she stopped her woman's blood even when her clothes grew tight, even when she began to hear the others, they called her a witch. It was an uncomfortable conversation 
for a father to have with a daughter, especially so when she was trying to be a good girl and keep a secret. She was not a witch. She did not belong to the devil. Even though she still sometimes followed animals almost into the dark forbidden woods, they all came to her now after years of burnt bread crusts. Why could she never do some things right? At least she was never wasteful and God's creatures did not go hungry during cold winters. Her father sometimes asked if she didn't burn the bread on purpose to follow animals. He didn't think to ask about the bread she would bring home from the baker's house. Goodman Baker told her she was a good girl. To certain others, he whispered otherwise after Sunday services. He called her a witch. Her belly grew bigger. They told her she was unwelcome at Sunday's service, though she quoted scripture better than the minister. Yet, while she could quote whatever was asked to perfection, she never thought to use the sacred words to prove her innocence. They called her a witch. The bigger her belly grew, the more problems she caused. Now Goodman Baker was burning bread, for no reason he would say, but for what must be a spell or curse. An early frost, followed by almost summer heat, and then another scythe-sharp frost, before harvest or the last leaves fell, was unnatural, an unholy blight, and rats plagued upon storehouses. Indeed, some rats were found, Yet to such waning, but two or three were a plague. Had she not been seen feeding vermin her enchanted, bedeviled, burnt bread crusts? They called her a witch. Her father argued, her father defended, though he cried, begged at home to hear the truth. But she would be a good girl and never speak a secret and never speak ill of someone else. They called her a witch. And then they came to take her father's property, to take her to the cells. Her father fought. She'd never seen him violent, not with angry goats, nor misbehaving mules, nor anything. He made other men bleed. But he fell, trampled, as they chased her, Goodman Baker in the lead. He called her a witch. I was a good girl. I was a good girl. She ran to the only place she knew they would not follow. They called her a witch. The man in the woods was not much older than she, but his skin was red like they said the devil's skin was, so she was afraid. Yet she was too cold and hungry to do more than tremble and accept the food and blanket he gave her. In time, she came to learn he too was chased away by his people. But he wasn't a good boy. He was sometimes, but not always. When he was good, he taught her about plants. He held her when she was sick and in pain. He brought her food and blankets. When he was not, he left bruises, even on her swollen belly, even on the small child that grew from the babe birthed from the swell of her belly. She didn't return to the village, wouldn't for many years. But in the few months after she ran, after they trampled her father to death, winter came and even more things began to die. People grew sick, animals grew sick, fires would blaze too much or never start, crops and stores were lost, houses collapsed under frozen water and snow, meeting house was half collapsed during Sunday service. 
She would not set foot in that village for years, past when Goodman Baker and Goodwife Baker were laid to the ground, and their children grew, married, saw swollen bellies, and baked communal bread. Still, those in the village knew she certainly must live in the dark, forbidden, bedeviled woods. Their hardships were not what their God promised. The devil must be interfering. They called her a witch. So that was part one of Witch. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun performing it for you. And if you liked it, please share it around, leave me a comment, maybe subscribe, and tune in next week and get the second half of the story and find out what happens to our poor witch. Thank you and happy Halloween!